Well, hello and welcome to Unleash Dogs Without Limits. I'm Carl Metzler. We've got another great show lined up for you this week. We're sitting down with the U.S. Army's Military Working Dog Program Manager, Sergeant Major Viridiana Lavalle, to talk about our nation's four-legged soldiers. You know, the U.S. military has a long history of utilizing the capabilities of working dogs in times of war and in times of peace. And tonight, we'll take a look behind the scenes of the Army's Working Dog Program and find out how these dogs are making an impact worldwide, right here on Unleash. There are over 86 million dogs in the United States, but only a select few are considered elite working or sporting dogs. From police and military canines to hunting and sporting dogs and everything in between, meet the dogs your dog aspires to be. Get ready to see man's best friend in a whole new light. This is Unleashed. I'm Star Major V. Dana Levi. I'm the Army Military Working Dog Program Manager. So I joined the Army in August of 2001. So I've been in the Army for a total of 21 years. 2001, I joined the Military Police Corps. So back then, you could not just join straight out of high school to become a dog handler. You had to join the Military Police Corps first. And then once you got there, then you put in a special request and then be able to go to canine school. Um, now, and you know, we have our own MOS, Military Occupational Skill. So you can actually be a dog handler right out of high school uh, for the United States Army. So I know the other branches of service don't do that. They do the tradition where you have to join the security forces and then go to canine school. So when I was about 12 years old, I fell in love with Rin Tin Tin. I decided I wanted to be a dog handler because before that I wanted to be a veterinarian. So Rin Tin Tin took my eyes away from being a vet and I was like, all right, I want to be a dog handler. So when I was about 16, I got my first German Shepherd and I would start following canine units and you know watching what they were doing at training and kind of mic you know trying to mimic what they were doing with my German Shepherd. And then I saw the War Dog movie during junior ROTC um, in high school about Vietnam uh, dog handlers. And I knew right then and there, I'm joining the Army and I want to be a dog handler. So the War Dog movie kind of really represents uh, what the War Dogs did for Vietnam in that era, which a lot of people don't realize. You know, they saved up to 10,000 lives. And just the bond that the handlers had with their dogs and what they were experiencing and how they were saving lives and just the training that they went through is something that you know I fell in love with and it was very passionate of mine. You have to be passionate because a lot of people say, okay, you're just training and having fun with dogs, but there's so much more to it. And again, now we're asking 18, 19 year olds right out of high school to not just take care of themselves and to learn to be away from home, but now they're taking care of another live animal, you know, and they're maintaining their health, their fitness, feeding them, grooming them, taking care of them. So it's definitely a lot to ask of these young men and women that are volunteering to become military working dog handlers. So I went to canine school in 2003, and I would say when I went to my first uh, assignment as a dog handler, which was at Fort Myer uh, here in DC, there was one to two females per, you know, kennels. That was, I would say that was the average, you know, one to two, if that. Now in 2022, we're about 22% of the 31 kilo MOS are women uh, handlers. So we've definitely come a long ways it's still a very male dominant career field, but there's definitely more women now than there was 20 years ago. So we've made some progress. Regardless, man or woman in the canine career field, because it is small, you're definitely gonna have to pay your dues and earn people's respect. So no matter what, you're gonna have to work really hard. But I know that coming up through the ranks, I always felt like I had to prove myself day in and day out regardless. And you definitely have to work that much harder um, because of the fact that maybe you are small framed. Again, whether you're man or woman, you're, you're small framed, you're getting tugged around by, you know, maybe an 80 pound uh, military working dog. So yes, uh, you have to be tough and you have to be prepared to do the job, but that's where passion's gonna kick in and it's gonna take care of itself. I love what I do. Uh, again, I joined 
the Army to become a dog handler. Um, it's definitely my passion. I tell people I wasn't born to be behind a computer like I am now, um, just because of the position that I'm in. I'd rather be outside training dogs all day, every day, in dog teams, um, but it's definitely a passion. For your active dog, not just any dog food will do. It takes special care and nutrition to support their energy to work and play. That's why we made Kinetic Performance Dog Food. Each Kinetic formula is made with three animal proteins and no fillers like corn, wheat, or soy. This lets you feed less and still get more energy, faster recovery, and better weight maintenance. If health and performance matter to you, give Kinetic a try. We build it for our dogs, but you'll love it for yours. When it comes to elite canine and handler training, the best of the best turn to one place, Von Lick Kennels. Von Lick is the premier full-service canine training center and detection service provider in the world. Their world-renowned training methods and experienced training staff produce the best canine and handler training available anywhere. When only the best will do, join over 5,000 law enforcement, government, and civilian agencies who count on Von Lick Kennels. Feel like the season just got started? Well, there's no reason to stop hunting now. At Highland Hunting, you can enjoy a great upland experience through the end of March. Located in southeast Iowa, we have over 1,200 acres of diverse upland habitat with the best flying and wildest birds you'll find at any upland outfitter. Our incredible staff and great accommodations let us show you a true Iowa upland experience at Highland Hunting. Give us a call and schedule your next adventure today. The first military work dog symposium that we did was in 2022. Um, so this is something that I was very passionate about. As a young kennel master, young trainer, I wanted to see um, come to fruition. So our first one uh, was in Muscatatuck Urban Training Center um, out there in Indiana. And this was an opportunity for the military to leverage the civilian canine industry and to really understand what their best standards are, their best practices. I exposed my handlers to 17 different hands-on courses where handlers would round robin. So one day they're at one course for eight hours, the next day they would go to a different, completely different course. And again, they're focusing on different critical uh, skill sets that week. Um, so it's just a, a way to come together as a community, both military and the civilian, and just be able to collaborate and work together on you know what everybody's doing and learning to be able to advance uh, the program as a whole. And really that's the whole mission set of the symposium is to expose different handlers, kennel masters and program managers to different vendors and companies and again, you know, understanding who to leverage for depending on what critical tasks they want to focus on. So again, you know, we do detection, we do patrol, we do scenario based, we do law enforcement, deployment. So it just gives them an opportunity to be able to work with uh, different entities, both military and civilian. I think networking with different um, entities and again, young handlers being able to work with other handlers and be able to teach each other, you know, different things that they're learning. Because again, depending on what installation they're coming from, they're going to do certain things based off their mission sets, but they're going to go from that installation to a completely different one. So just being able to work and network, I think is critical for those young handlers. My uh, first last name, Brandon Spears, Staff Sergeant United States Army um, from Savannah, Georgia. So there's a lot of complexities with the Military Police, Military Working Dog Program. Uh, we are in the Military Police Regiment for the United States Army. Uh, when it comes down to breaking everything down, we have to support law enforcement missions locally, uh, which is vital to uh, not only base security, but also the community. Uh, moving on from a uh, more United States spectrum, that the United States Secret Service missions, supporting FBI missions, supporting DHS, Department of Homeland Security, uh, the Border Patrol missions. We support a lot of, uh, a multitude of, of different uh, uh, missions within the United States. And then looking at it from uh, around the world, uh, we have individual augmented deployments to Africa, uh, right now Germany. So a lot of these different uh, missions that we have to support all over the world, uh, you have to have that good training to be ready for that. So the Army Military Working Dog Program is authorized 500 military working dogs. All of our military working dogs are dual purpose, so they're either patrol drug or patrol explosive. We're a force multiplier, and for the installations, which is military bases all over the United States and overseas, we do law enforcement um, capabilities. Uh, so during deployments, uh, again, worldwide contingency operations, um, we'll support uh, forward operating bases, 
Again, same thing, This what you would do on a military installation, you would do on a forward operating base. So random anti-terrorism measures, um, they'll be at security checkpoints, um, search in different areas in the FOB, just depends what the mission set is. And they will also do route clearance patrols. Military working dogs are used to, you know, look for different, you know, whether it's caches, vehicle born IEDs, uh, personal born IEDs, um, again, any type of explosive devices, military working dogs are trained to find that. We're trained to find military and civilian grade uh, explosives. So our military working dogs are certified in nine explosive odors and that's not counting homemade explosives. So I think canines are so unique in themselves because of the fact of their high sense of smell, um, basically their senses. No machine can replicate what a military working dog can provide on a battlefield. So bottom line, that makes them the most viable and important asset um, to soldiers and to, well, service members across the board that they're out there deployed. All these different type of dog breeds, they're bred for a certain component. Um, and the reason, you know, going, dating back all the way to when they were wolves, uh, we developed them as humans to, to be so special and bred them to uh, 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 fit into exactly what, what we want them to do. Uh, overall, the, the, the swiftness and, and, and what they learn, uh, applying those principles of conditioning into the dogs, it, it's great and they can do so much. They are a, a true force multiplier. Canines work extremely hard just to please their handler. And at the end of the day, if the handler is making it fun for that dog, that there's no limit to what that dog can do because their capabilities are endless. It's just about can you take a step back and how creative can you be when you are training that dog? So it's very impressive because again, it's that relationship, you can't compare that to anything. Are you tired of the same old toolbox that doesn't keep your gear organized, clean, or protected? Then you need a cam locker. Our exclusively designed aluminum toolboxes have hefty T-handles, insulated lids, and feature the cam locker system. The toughest aluminum toolbox lock. Proudly manufactured in the USA, cam locker will be the best and last toolbox you will ever own. So keep your tools and gear secure with a cam locker toolbox. The key to security. Your grandmother's fine china, those trendy sneakers, your collection of hand-carved duck decoys. Auto Owners protects your home. Because, well, somebody should. That's simple human sense. Ask Safari Insurance in Cincinnati if Auto Owners makes sense for you. Oh, now you do your job. For your active dog, not just any dog food will do. It takes special care and nutrition to support their energy to work and play. That's why we made Kinetic Performance Dog Food. Each Kinetic formula is made with three animal proteins and no fillers like corn, wheat, or soy. This lets you feed less and still get more energy, faster recovery, and better weight maintenance. If health and performance matter to you, give Kinetic a try. We build it for our dogs, but you'll love it for yours. So our military working dogs are military athletes and a lot of individuals don't really think about that, but what we're asking them to do day in and day out physically, even mentally and emotionally for a dog is a lot. It's a lot of strain on their body. It's a lot of strain on you know their stress levels. I mean, during detection alone, we're asking dogs to independently figure out where that substance odor is. So they're working in different environments, you know, different temperatures, indoor, outdoor, you know, and then again, just having them hop up on certain pieces of equipment or furniture, you know, over and over and over. It's very um, taxing on a military working dog. Hi, I'm John Howard. I'm a co-owner of Kinetic Performance Dog Food, and we're out here this week at the Muscatatuck Urban Warfare Training Center. Uh, we're here for the Military Working Dog Symposium. This has been uh, an incredible week. We're out here with the Army and their 31 kilo program. So this is all the working uh, dogs in the Army. It's just really an honor to be here with all these patriots and folks from the Army and, and leadership from the Army. Everybody knows dog food. You talk about the meats and the, you know, the proteins and the fats and things that are in there. But one of the most important components of, of nutrition are really the micro ingredients, the vitamins, the minerals, the, the 
in, in, in the case of Alltech, who's one of our big partners, uh, they do a lot of work with yeast and, and various things that help with digestion. So uh, this week we have Cami Grandine and Dr. Rebecca Dulles out here from Alltech. Uh, they've been tremendously supportive of our efforts to you know, just help spread the word on the importance of the micronutrients in these canine diets to, you know, again, get back and make these working canines uh, that much more fit and that much more capable uh, to get done what they need to get done. So my name is Cami Grandine and I'm the sales manager for Alltech's companion animal business in the U.S. As a company, Alltech is really pretty diverse. Um, we are a global company. We have uh, products and ingredients for all species of animals, whether that's dairy, poultry, uh, swine, aquaculture, also a crop science division, life science division. My name is Rebecca Dallas. I am a research scientist for Alltech, which is an animal feed ingredient company. For me, the hardest part of being in science is trying to come up with new ideas. So sometimes you need to step outside of the lab um, to generate that new idea. It's how do you identify what the pain point is? And sometimes talking to other people outside of what you typically do on a day-to-day -day basis can actually generate that idea and help move you know, where science needs to go in the right direction. So this week has been such a cool opportunity um, for me to come see some of these military working dogs. Just getting an understanding of the jobs that they do, the stresses that they are under, how they're being asked to perform, and the focus and the intensity that, that these animals have, and just how important, from my perspective, that nutrition plays a role in that. I mean, these dogs are have a lot of demands on them. Um, it's really been eye-opening to me to understand everything that goes into the process of being a military working dog. I've noticed that these dogs are essentially elite athletes um, and you need to have the best bang for your buck when we're talking about nutrition. You don't want these dogs eating an excessive amount of kibble and then trying to have them perform their best. Nutrition to these dogs is incredibly important. One, you're putting these, these animals under a tremendous amount of stress. So when you think about the dogs that are here on the grounds, uh, some of them have traveled from across the globe. We've got teams here from Germany, we've got teams from Europe, uh, teams from Australia. When you start layering on the amount of stress that these dogs are under, really what you have in that nutritional profile and that food becomes paramount. It has to be a clean diet, it has to be easily digested and readily absorbed. And so working with the team from Alltech, we were able to achieve what we feel is one of the best profiles in the marketplace. And so you don't have to feed the dogs nearly as much. Uh, but the other thing you don't want to have to do is pile a bunch of food into these dogs and then have them go out and spend, like you're seeing some of these dogs, spending uh, several hours running different lanes. So that stress of getting in and out of the car, they're hearing gunfire, they might hear an explosion, there might be uh, smoke. Uh, that's being uh, integrated into the into a bu building to simulate maybe a fire. So you see these dogs dealing with a number of different stress factors, and so nutrition really becomes paramount. These working dogs, they give so much to keep our country safe, our soldiers safe, um, and at the end of the day, each and in, each individual in this country safe. So I feel like it's our job to ensure that these dogs are fed appropriately and if there's something that's missing in their diet that needs to be fulfilled, um, I'm hoping we can step in there and, and help them out. No matter what you feed, sometimes your dog needs a little help to keep them at the top of their game. For some dogs, it can even mean the chance to just live a normal, healthy life. Our kinetic supplements are formulated to meet specific needs to get and keep your dog at optimal health and performance. Your dog will love them and you'll be amazed at the difference they make. If your dog needs an extra boost, give Kinetic a try. We build it for our dogs and you'll love it for yours. This winter, enjoy more of Ocean City for a little less. Enjoy seaside escapes and coastal cuisine. Enjoy small crowds. 
and big fun. Enjoy rising with the tide and leave all worries behind. Find your reason to smile all winter long in Ocean City, Maryland. I need you to get me out of the country, out of here, away. All in exchange for a sip of coffee? Yeah. It's Black Rifle Coffee. Let's try some. Why don't you head over to BlackRifleCoffee.com and get yourself set up with a Coffee Club subscription. So I think, I think dog teams is unique because of the fact that the soldier not only has to take care of making sure that they're physically, mentally, emotionally ready for deployment, but they also have to make sure that their military working dog is ready for deployment. So it's a, you, you can't be selfish in that sense. You're making sure that you're squared away and your dog is ready to go as well. And then same thing for those NCOs or not commissioned officers that are leading, you know, either a small team or a squad size element or a military working dog detachment, you know, making sure that not just the soldiers that are two-legged, but the four-legged soldiers are prepared um, to face whatever mission set that they're required to do. Everything uh, equates uh, to an operational environment. Uh, for, for all MOSs, to include military working dog handlers, we're expected to go downrange, support Secret Service missions, support missions all over the world, uh, support law enforcement missions locally, um, and everything of that sort. Uh, so with that being said, with training, you have to have that good training to conduct those different operations. Uh, with that being said, we have to have training all over uh, the different uh, types of spectrum to uh, be ready for those operations. Dog teams that are not certified, that are training for certification, they're gonna train five days of the week. So that's you know eight to 10 hour days. They're training with their dog off and on throughout the entire day, focusing on different critical tasks. And then if once they are certified, then they are required to provide 24 hour utilization a week, whether it's during the days or night shifts. And then the other three days that week, they're gonna be conducting training, focusing on you know maintaining that proficiency. So the Army certification process is typically a four to five day event. It's an annual requirement. They will be tested in all of their critical tasks. The dogs will be tested as a dog team with their handler um, to make sure that they can maintain a certain level of proficiency. For explosives, it's 95% or above uh, with two false responses or 10%. And then for patrol drugs, 90% or better for proficiency. And again, it's an annual requirement for certification. I would say the average dog team trains for 120 days as a team to prepare for certification. And that could be a brand new handler with a experienced dog or maybe an experienced handler with a brand new dog. But I would say on average it's 120 days to prepare for certification. I think the bond between a handler and their military working dog or their working dog uh, definitely is something that you can't really explain. Uh, but again, the bond, I think, between the handler and the dog, because of the fact that their life is dependent on that dog, you can't, you can't compare that. Granted, with another soldier, yes, we're depending on one another, but when it's your military working dog and that connection, especially with training and then deployments and then going on different mission sets, it's just, uh, it's incredibly special. I would say the best time of my life and in the Army was being a dog handler and just being able to work with my dog, you know, whether it's training or figuring out ways to advance my dog or actually on mission. And then when I was a dog trainer at Joint Base San Antonio, that was the best assignment that I had was training dogs all day, every day, um, and then being able to work with different dogs. I try to tell handlers, you know, it's the stubborn dogs that teach you the most. It's the easy push button dogs that we call. Um, yeah, they're, you're not gonna learn as much, but when you get a stubborn or a very energetic dog, now you're having to learn different styles to get the dog to work. And it's the same thing, it makes you a better leader because then you have to learn to have different leadership styles to match to different soldiers' personalities. So. It's uh, a definitely a unique experience and it makes you a better person and a better soldier and a better leader. Individuals want to become a dog handler. Uh, again, depending on how you want to go about it, the Army is the only service that you can join right out of high school and become a dog handler. You want to be physically fit, you know, make sure that you don't have a fear for dogs because you'd be surprised. Um, we've had a few that 
go canine and then it's they have a big fear for dogs so if that's the case um, it could be counterproductive um, but again if they're interested in becoming a dog handler then just go to your local recruiter and tell them that hey you know whether it's 31 kilo in the army or another branch of service um, their the opportunities are endless the canine opened up many doors for me i've gone to a lot of different advanced schools i've been a travel all over the nation and overseas so i've seen a, a lot of different canine programs you work with international partners so just a lot of opportunities um, for you as a dog handler you know it's hard to underestimate the impact dogs have had on our military and on the safety and well-being of the brave women and men who protect this country today we got a glimpse into the army's 31 kilo military working dog program but the military offers a wide range of working dog occupations, each designed specifically to take advantage of the unique capabilities that dogs can bring to the battlefield. And we owe all of them a sincere debt of gratitude. Well, that's all the time we've got left this week. I hope you've enjoyed the show, and we'll see you next time on Unleashed.